I'm Tom Adler and I'm here with Scott Frankenberger who is a potter from Battleground, Indiana who has a number of pieces in the permanent collection of the Art Museum of Greater Lafayette. Uh, thanks for joining me for mm -hmm. a few comments about your work. Uh, first of all, Scott, could you tell us a little bit about your background, uh, your formal training as an artist, maybe artists who have influenced you or teachers who had a big, big, big influence on your career? Um, yeah, I, I started out as a uh, in college as a math major and uh, uh, during my sophomore year got an opportunity to take a study abroad program and, and uh, after seeing all the museums and uh, one of the professors that was with us was an art professor uh, when we came back I decided to try some art classes and uh, really liked it and um, uh, then switched to an art major and uh, um, got a teaching license at the same time and then moved down to West Lafayette area. And uh, while I was here, I taught high school for two years. And then I started taking some classes at Purdue for a master's degree. Uh, and at the time, the professor was Marge Levy. Okay. Um, I don't know if you remember I her. I remember her, yes. Yeah, and uh, she was a very inspiring and uh, uh, enjoyable teacher in many, many ways. Um, and so she sort of helped get my career off the ground. When I was finishing my studies, I thought, well, this this is time to give it a try, you know, get, now or never, try to make my mm -hmm. living at it. And she had given our, the students in her classes a lot of background in um, the professionalism of being an artist as well as the training of being an artist. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think that, you know, if, if anything, she was a big influence uh, in, in that area. And then over the years, I've just uh, watched a lot, a lot of other artists that I admire. Uh, uh, people that I would uh, like their ideas and try to incorporate them into my own work and uh, but most of the time uh, since about 1978 I've been working as a self-supporting artist. Mm -hmm. so. okay. mm -hmm. uh, uh, the piece that we have uh, between us is from our permanent collection. Mm -hmm. Is this representative of uh, the traditional style you work in, uh, particularly at the time that you created, I think it's mm -hmm. 2009? Or was it in some way a breakthrough to something, uh, a new technique or style? Um, well. Um, I'll, I'll go back a little bit. My first works were very, uh, I don't, in relation to this piece, they were very drab and brown and, and mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of sort of earth tones. And then along in about the 1990s, I started working with uh, the red glaze, which is mm -hmm. a, a, a glaze that's hard to control. Um, and so after a, many, many failed attempts, I started to figure out the chemistry of it uh, with regard to the glaze and also the firing conditions. And this piece is an example where I was trying to work larger. I was working with porcelain. Uh, porcelain is a clay that doesn't like to be made larger. It it's, uh, mm -hmm. tends to be made with more small, intimate objects. So I was working larger. I was also trying to push the form out so that it had a, a nice, robust quality. And also, when you push clay out like that, it tends to want to collapse while you're working on it. So mm -hmm. to keep a form like this under control, I mean, this it's not that it's a breakthrough pre piece, but it's a successful piece in that it, you know, it did everything I was trying to accomplish during that time period. Mm -hmm. Now in the work that you're doing currently, are doing, you doing something that's in any way radically different from what we see here? Um, not, I wouldn't say radically different, except that I'm maybe pulling back from working so much with the red glaze. Um, a lot of people associate this glaze with, with me. It's kind of my, my trademark mm -hmm. glaze. Um, but I'm trying to work with some other colors, bring some other uh, colors and, and um, uh, effects, uh, glazes that maybe run a little bit more um, so that as they go over the form, they, they do things with the form because of the way the glaze runs. It'll run in this direction or that direction based on the shape of the piece. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to do that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, I'm getting older <laughs> and uh, my, my uh, uh, income has been by luck or by what, uh, somewhat stabilized. I mean, I, I never know how much I earn during any given year until the end of the year, but it mm -hmm. seems to have leveled out so that it's a dependable income. So I'm trying some more uh, experimental pieces that maybe uh, I'm not so concerned about selling it uh, the way I was maybe 15, 20 years ago when I had kids in college and things like that. So I'm, I'm you know, deviating from that urge to sell and maybe playing a little bit more with, yeah. with shapes and glazes and forms and so forth. Now, do you work in any other media? Um, occasionally, not, not with any regularity. Um, I've done some other projects, um, 
public projects. Uh, I did a, a sculpture for the city of Lafayette that's made completely out of mm -hmm. railroad ties. Uh, it was a chance to just get it totally out of mm -hmm. my comfort zone. But um, uh, mostly I work with clay in, in one form or another. Okay. Uh, could you reflect for us a little bit on your maybe philosophy of, of an artist or your vocation as an artist? Well, one of the things I like is, is uh, for my forms, whether they be a plate or a, a jar or a bowl or a dinnerware set or a, a mural or, a, or even a fireplace or something, I like the piece to sort of speak for itself. I don't like to talk too much about mm -hmm. my work. I like people to come up and have their own uh, engagement with the piece, have a dialogue with the work. There's some pieces that I really like that nobody else likes. There's pieces that other people like that I really uh, released with with a lot of reservations. They weren't mm -hmm. my favorite works, um, but I, I like for my works to, um, you know, I mean, eventually when you sell them, they go out there and they're without you, and so they have to be able to talk without you. Mm -hmm. So I like for my pieces to to uh, speak for themselves, and hopefully there's enough in each piece that um, there isn't only one message. That there's. Uh, something for everybody, uh, or m maybe not everybody, but for many people within each piece that I make. Okay, thank you, Scott. Mm -hmm.